Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamer tag is iRyanI, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, -E and then you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan and welcome back to another episode of Modded Monday. We're on week number 256 now, guys. I've picked out five new mods for you guys to check out and perhaps add them to your load order if you find them interesting. But like always, before we jump into them, I want to remind you guys that I'm partnered with Gamersups, which in my opinion is the best energy drink on the market. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to check out the link in the description where you can go to their store page and you can also use the code RTD for a 10% discount on all your purchases. I also want to say don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any brand new mods each and every single week. Now that all that's out of the way, we can jump into this week's mods. And starting us off, we have a simple weapon mod called the Master of Archery, the Comprehensive Bow. The mod page reads that you can wield with skill, shoot to kill, with weapons of speed to satisfy your need. This adds 21 new bows for the Master of Archery from basic starter weapons to the advanced ultimate weapons of power. You can use wood, iron, and leather to craft basic weapons and upgrade it as you level up, and you can even upgrade with gold and gems to craft valuable ornamental weapons to sell or display. You can also upgrade with silver and soul gems for bonuses against the undead, upgrade with steel, ebony, and other materials to craft increasingly powerful bows. As your archery level increases, so will the number of weapons available for you to craft at smithing locations, culminating the finest weapons at level 100 when you purchase the Bullseye perk. It doesn't require any smithing perks or any levels to craft, but weapons from steel onwards benefit from smithing perks, with the highest benefiting from the Daedric smithing perk. You can also find a hidden chest in Whiterun containing copies of all the bows, which is just behind the counter in the Drunken Huntsman. Just in case you want to go for a more powerful bow in the future and you just want to play with it and see how it works first before you end up grinding your archery to actually obtain it and craft it for yourself. Now although a very simple mod, it does add 21 new bows to craft and actually work towards whenever you're working to get your archery level up to 100 and whenever you start to you know craft the beginner weapons and then you start to you know grind the levels and increase your archery a little bit and then you can craft more powerful weapons so you'll actually feel rewarded the more and more you grind your skills and actually get up and craft these bows and you'll just get more and more powerful as you get better at archery. That's something that I really like about the mod, is something that always keeps you progressing and makes you always rewarded for the you know special milestones that you hit, whether it be 20, 50, 75, or 100. You'll always be crafting new bows with this mod. And you also have a bunch of new bows that do a bunch of unique abilities, my favorite being the Chaos Bow, which has a little bit of everything. There's so much damage to be dealt with these new bows, and I absolutely love this mod. And that's definitely why it's featured here at our number five spot. So if you wanna become a true master of archery, I'd strongly recommend downloading the Mastery of Archery, the Comprehensive Bow mod, and giving some of these new weapons a try for yourself. Coming in at the number 4 spot, we have a brand new settlement and player home to live in, this is the Thornbrew Village mod. The mod page reads that Thornbrew Village is a small community in the Reach featuring two followers, traders, a mine slash dungeon, a small player home, a free player horse, as well as four new weapons to discover. The Thornbrew Hearthstone is a small player home with safe storage, alchemy and enchanting tables downstairs, as well as an ancient greatsword with a powerful enchantment, as well as smithing equipment out back. Now going into some of the lore behind this village is that Reach Rock Mine is in trouble. Felger tunneled into an ancient dwemer ruin while mining and the village was almost destroyed. Gaff was able to seal up the door but the threat still remains. The old ruin contains three new weapons and several custom enemies to discover and fight. Some of the NPCs, we have a new follower who's a female Dark Elf Fire Mage, and she owns a home in the village and sits guard in the Watchtower in the mornings. She heads to Markarth on Saturdays for a drink, she carries a staff with a custom model and enchantment, but don't worry, you don't have to kill her to take it, there's simply a copy of the staff in her home that you can freely take if you'd like to use it. Moving on, we have Gaff, who's another follower who's a male Nord melee attacker, and he's married to Mormer and wanders around the village during the day. 
He prepares for attacks by the Forsworn in the area, and at night, Gaff usually sleeps on a covered porch in the Thornbrew Hearthstone in case he's needed. Now, it's also important to note that Gaff is also a two-handed master trainer, so he's very useful to have at your side if you have a two-handed character, because you could just brute force your way through everything and have him train you along the way to make it as efficient as possible. Moving on, we have Mormer, who's married to Gaff and a caretaker for the Thornbrew Hearthstone, and she can be found all around the village farming, feeding chickens, or cleaning up at home. Lochnar is the general goods trader, and he mostly stays inside his shop wanting to trade with travelers passing through the area. Wrapping up the NPCs within this mod, we have Jaredy, who runs the Apothecary, Felger, who owns Reach Rock Mine and could use some help clearing out the Dwemer Ruin that he accidentally tunneled into, and then Mahdi, who's your new horse. So there's so many new people to interact with and talk to within this mod, but not only that, you have a brand new village that's been added into Skyrim that you can call home. One thing that I really like about this mod is it comes with its own side quest that isn't actually marked so it doesn't actually count as a quest, but they encourage you to go into Reach Rock Mine and clear it out and get some of the new weapons that are available for you to use. And you can also fight new Dwemer enemies that were made specifically for this mod. There's so much to uncover here within the Thornbrew Village mod and that's definitely why it's featured here at a number 4 spot, so I strongly recommend downloading this mod and making Thornbrew Village your brand new home. Coming in at our number 3 spot, we have a brand new way to efficiently mine in Skyrim without actually having to do any mining for yourself. This is the Dwemer Mining Facility mod, and it comes with so many different features that it would be almost impossible to cover all in one video, but I'll definitely try my best here. As you walk up to the Dwemer Mining Facility, there'll be a book that you can actually learn how to rebuild the facility because it'll be run down and completely destroyed, so you'll need some Dwemer materials in order to get things up and running again, and this is also a way of actually using a lot of the Dwemer items that you find within Dwemer Ruins, because a lot of the struts, you know, the plates and all the things that you end up finding laying all over over the place in Dwemer Ruins don't actually have a final use in the game. But this mod actually changes it and gives pretty much everything that you find within those Dwemer Ruins purpose and meaning now. Dwarven Oil is also going to have a lot more meaning with this mod installed and be a lot more valuable to you in your travels. But not just that, the Dwarven Metal Ingots, you know, the Struts like I said, and just all the little miscellaneous items that you find scattered throughout Dwemer Ruins will actually have a use now. You can use this to build up the Dwemer Mining Facility and make it functional once again, and once you do, you'll have a bunch of different buttons that you can walk up and interact with, and I was very surprised with how convoluted and very complicated this mod can be if you don't know what you're doing. But I'm very thankful that within the actual Dwemer Mining Facility itself, there's a bunch of books that teach you how everything works, how everything's constructed properly, and how to actually use the facility, so it's very easy to, you know, get behind and actually use for yourself without having to watch any videos online. But if you guys do want to see a separate video where I dive into the Dwemer Mining Facility and show everything that it can do, I'll definitely be willing to do that because this is a phenomenal mod to use. But you can put Dwarven Oil into this little machine that I'm showing you here, and then once it's full of, you know, one, two, or three, however, you know, efficient you want it to be, the more Dwarven Oil you can put into it. But then you can set it to either find specific ores for you, or you can search for random ores. And I really like searching for random ores, because then I always like to make a bunch of different things that I can just sell off, or just sell the ore outright, or maybe find some sapphires or other gems and unique things through there, so I like to always set it to random. But if you wanted to, you know, go in and and make your own armor set and maybe you wanted to make a brand new ebony set and you need a bunch of ebony ore you can set it to look for just ebony ore but it is a little complicated on how to do so you'll have to walk downstairs and then open up the book of the constellations and it'll actually teach you and then you'll need a bunch of soul gems that you'll have to feed into this little puzzle grid here and once everything's lined up correctly you'll adjust the temperatures and there's so much that goes into actually getting this thing up and running but once you do you'll get a bunch of green lights on everything and then you can start your mining efficiently You'll see me doing this here by lining up the constellations for the two-handed skill tree, and once I do and I get the sword perfect and I flip the lever, I get a green light, and then a bunch of rainbow colors appear up on the top of the facility and you'll know it's working then. You can then adjust the temperatures for everything that you need, and if you need to find the temperature, you'll have to just open up the book that comes with the mod, and it'll teach you whatever type of ore you're trying to make, what temperature it'll have to be at, and then once you find out the day and season that you're in, you'll have to switch those accordingly. It has to be very specific, which I absolutely love. Once you get the hang of this mod, it's so much fun to do. 
And some of the other features that you have within this mod is while you're doing all that mining up at the surface, you can go into this side chamber, which allows you to charge up the facility with even more power by playing a weird version of Candy Crush on the wall. Yeah, Candy Crush in Skyrim, who would have thought? But you do this with gems and you line it up on the wall and you make a bunch of matches and every time you get a match, it gives you some charge so the facility can use more power. I really like this little mechanic. I don't know why. It's just very charming and it's just kind of fun to do as a little side thing as you're waiting for all the ores to mine. But on top of that, other than having Candy Crush in Skyrim, there's also an item duplicator, which does, as you guessed it, duplicate items that you would need into the Dwemer facility. So if you need a bunch of Dwemer struts, or you need some cogs, or gears, or anything, you can duplicate it with the duplicator book that shows you all the materials that you'll need in order to duplicate these items, and then you can feed it into the duplicator and make as many items as you'd like. And all of these amazing new features come jam-packed in a 4.42 megabyte mod, which I found to be incredibly impressive with how much this brings to Skyrim and how little memory space it takes up, it can pretty much blend into your load order and feel like a part of the base game. But it makes mining so much more efficient and doesn't make it so you have to delve into a bunch of different mines and mine the ores for yourself. You can play a mini game in order to charge up the facility, learn about the seasons and what temperature each ore has to be at. It's a fun little learning experience that just makes mining all the more better and that's why this mod's featured here at our number 3 spot. So I strongly recommend downloading the Dwemer Mining Facility mod. Coming in at our number 2 spot, we have a brand new bundle mod that jam packs a bunch of different animation mods all into one simple mod pack here. This is the BBC AO V3 mod, and it contains mods such as the fan favorite ultimate dodge mod, as well as the script fixes, attack cancel and reanimated mod, you have the recoilated skate fix, retimed hit frames, the blocking movement fix, two-handed weapon motion fixes, the animated armory, Oliver's magic animations, so every single magic item that you cast or any spell that you'll do has a brand new unique animation. You have 360 movement, which means that no matter what type of direction that you're facing, you won't just snap immediately in that direction. You'll have 360 character movement, so you can run in circles in third person and actually look like a normal human being. You have the movement behavior overhaul, the jump behavior overhaul, which adds a bunch of new animations to movement and jumping, Sky SA as well as the control revamp, first person, bug fixes, intense combat mods, the jump attack mod, the unarmed normal and power combo, as well as the Elder Souls collection. Now this is a bunch of different animation mods that touch every single animation in the game, whether you're swinging a two-handed sword, a one-handed sword, no matter the type of situation that you're in inside of combat, there's so many new animations to discover and see here, and they're all absolutely badass. And like I said, the ultimate dodge mod, which is one of the fan favorite mods that is included in this mod here, it allows you to jump out of the way of different power hits, say a giant's about to smash you with his hammer, you can quickly dive out of the way like in Dark Souls, and don't think you'll feel too overpowered with this mod installed, because every enemy that you encounter in Skyrim also has this moveset. Which means that any enemy that you end up fighting can also dodge out of the way of your attacks, dodge towards you, jump and power attack you, and use all of these against you, so you have to be extremely careful in combat Combat, and it makes combat all more rewarding. I would consider this a total rework of Skyrim's combat, whether it comes to the animations, the actual combat itself and how difficult it is, or just how it looks, I really love everything about this mod, and the fact that it brings all of these amazing mods all into one simple mod here, you could simply just install this mod and have it sit in your load order and completely change the combat in Skyrim on its own. And that's definitely why this mod's featured here at a number two spot, so if you're looking for some new combat and you want to just overhaul everything that Skyrim's combat has to offer, then the BBC AO V3 is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out, so go download it and experience this new combat overhaul for yourself. Coming in at the number one spot this week, we have a brand new overhaul to every single creature and animal that you encounter in Skyrim. This is the Sevis Ron V2 Extended mod. And the mod page reads that this is a complete texture and mesh replacer for almost every single animal and creature in the game, including insects and fish too. This includes Odoin, bears, werewolves, chickens, huskies, dogs, dragon priests, draugr, elk and deer, falmer, firestorm and frost atronachs, foxes, frostbite spiders, giants and mammoths, 
goats, hag ravens, cows, horkers, horses, ice wraiths, mud crabs, rabbits, saber cats, and snowy saber cats, skeevers, skeletons, spriggan, trolls, and frost trolls, vampire lords, wisp mothers, wolves, butterflies, moths, dragonflies, and torch bugs, hawks, salmon, bees, and even ants. And where the extended part of this mod comes from is it adds a bunch of new creatures from Mahale mods as well, such as squirrels, foglings, pigeons, hummingbirds, mountain lions and cougars, giant eagles, classic ghosts, and more. Now I actually used the original Sivas Ron V1 whenever we made our RPG load order. We had every single creature in Skyrim to be completely remastered with brand new textures. But this is the second version and it doesn't just upgrade a couple textures here and there. This is a brand new overhaul with a bunch of new unique textures. So this is a complete rework and total reimagining of the creatures in Skyrim and I absolutely love it. So if you enjoy going around and exploring a bunch of different locations and encountering so many different creatures and fighting tons of different animals as well or going hunting is hunting is incredibly fun now just because of all the new creatures that you can find and there's a bunch of new dangerous creatures as well such as the mountain lions there's so much to discover here and i'm so happy that they actually made another version of this because i absolutely loved the first version of sevis ron so the fact that they're constantly working on adding new creatures and even upgrading the old ones that we know and love i absolutely love to see that whenever it comes to you know the modding community always looking to make mods better or add new things for us to discover in our travels in sky Skyrim, it's just a perfect thing to see here. So that's definitely why the Sevis Ron V2 Extended mod comes in at our number one spot. So I'd strongly recommend downloading it and finding some of these new creatures for yourself. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the top five Skyrim mods of the week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you knew it really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future top five mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions to there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and I will talk to you guys later. Thank you.